right, turn them up. Today on The Flush, we're heading to Dodge City, Kansas for a look back in time, but also a look into the future. As we tag along with young hunters learning to roust ringnecks. Oh. Stay with us, you're watching The Flush. The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Peasants Forever. How many of you guys have pheasant hunted before? Kind of? Okay. The future of bird hunting is alive and well in Kansas. Pay attention to where the dogs are. You guys have any questions? Okay. And we came to see what the future looked like. Over the next few days, our flush cameras will be aimed at three groups of young hunters. All led by this lady, Brittany French, and she's a bundle of energy and enthusiasm. So we're gonna wanna try to stay in a, a pretty straight line the best that we can. Brittany is director of field operations for a Kansas youth program called Pass It On. I grew up in a hunting family. I didn't really dabble in it all that much until I was a teenager or so. But then when I got involved with Outdoor Mentors in 2015, I realized how much fun it would be, one, to get back into it and take it more seriously, and then two, mentor kids along the way. You guys good? All right, hunt them up. Oh, there it is, Roost. There's some out here. Okay, we got quail right up here. There you go. There they are. Let them go. Uh, rooster. Rooster? Yep. Wasn't it? Yep. The first lesson for these young hunters was obvious. Chasing ringnecks is seldom a walk in the park. Yeah, it's a little windy, but that's Kansas, I guess. Was he discouraged? I think it's really cool that you guys are trying to get some teenagers to get off the couch and stop being lazy and come hunt and stuff, but yeah, I think it's really cool. It's the best job ever. I got started as a volunteer and got to witness right away the great things that this organization does for kids. All right, hunt them up. You see these kids come to life when they get to experience shooting their first deer or seeing a first cubby of quail or a pheasant flush. I think, hey, we got a point right here, Dennis. We got a point up yep. there. Mo's on one right here. They know how to handle gun safety. We just need to get them in the field and get them exposed to the opportunities that they can have going hunting. Whoa. Let's, uh, yeah, be ready here, be ready here. We worked with kids that had little or no opportunity to get outdoors and do this kind of thing at all. Oh, there you go, quail, quail, woo! Good shot. The number of kids that we took outdoors Field. that had never seen Field. a cow. Good job. And then you take them out and they get in the turkey woods and they see the world wake up in the morning. Pretty powerful stuff. Have you shot a quail before? First one, all right. Fast little suckers, tiny. Yeah. They're, they're nice, real nice. I could not shoot a pheasant all day and be happy with just watching dogs. While we switched fields, those famed Kansas winds increased.
first pheasant. Time for another lesson. Know when to quit battling bad hunting weather. Oh, it got pretty windy towards the end, but I don't know. It's always fun being out here. Some days it could be really calm, and then 10 minutes later, it would be blowing 30 miles an hour. Just never know. So ends our first glimpse at hunting's future. Okay, it's going. We'll look again tomorrow. When the turbines slow down and the tumbleweeds stop tumbling. Up next, we'll continue to pass it on and tag along with more Kansas kids, getting a taste of birds, dogs, and wide open spaces. Oh. Woo. You're watching The Flush. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition, North Dakota Tourism, Waltons, Benelli, and by Nutrisource. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Start your journey at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. Another group of young hunters. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Dennis. Thank you. Another safety meeting. We're going to have fun. And another addictive experience called bird hunting. So it begins for these young hunters and mentors. Here, we'll go down to the east end over there, and then we'll push it north. The dog and back is honoring the point. That's pretty cool. It's time to meet 11-year-old Addie. She's a German short hair pointer. She just turned 11 about uh, three weeks ago. She is a veteran. She has a lot of birds and a lot of hunts under her belt. She is an AKC master hunter. She has a lot of good habits. She has a lot of bad habits, too. <laughs> right here, Addie. Addie, here. We we're not going to talk about those. <laughs> Hey, good shooting. Woo! Good shot. I love doing things with kids. It's just my little way of paying back. I have been very fortunate in my life to be able to hunt quite a bit. Getting kids outside is very important to me. I love getting them off the computer and off the video games and getting them out here and enjoying what the good Lord gave us. You're ready, Jay. Hey, we got one right here, Dennis. Well, you just get up close to the birds and everything and see what they do. And the dogs pointing, it's pretty cool. We got three dogs pointing right here. Found one, huh? Yeah. I just like going out and see nature and stuff. See how they react and it's good food too. That's not your first pheasant, is it, Jace? Nope. I didn't think so. It's action packed. Like with deer hunting, you only get to shoot one deer. But with pheasants, there might be more in the next step. You never know. Hey, Cody, you see that next little thick stuff right there? Go ahead and hop in that. And we'll kind of spread out right here. Another lesson.
I think it's a really good organization to get kids that don't have the opportunities to do it out into the outdoors and just get them introduced to something. Yes, yeah, sometimes one's shooting eye seems to disappear. Happens to all of us. And yes, sometimes ringnecks simply disappear too. Time for a break. You guys help yourself to a sandwich here and then there's brownies in here too. I've been involved just long enough to where some of these kids are coming back saying, well, when can I start mentoring now that I've been hunting with you so much? And that's cool. Up next, we're going to hang out for a bit in Dodge City, where the ghosts of the Wild West also hang out in Boot Hill. Stay with us. You're watching The Flush. The Flush is brought to you by Ruffland Performance Kennels, Big Timber Fasteners, Sage and Breaker, DeWalt, and by Aluma Trailers. Pheasants Forever remains committed to protecting and restoring wildlife habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today and you'll help us to create more habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Your $35 will make a difference today that will last forever. By chance, if you hunt ringnecks near Dodge City, Take a break and head to town for a taste of the wild, wild west, because it's here. Longhorns still roam the range. And a famed lawman stands on the street corner. Drawing his pistol. Look at that long gun he got on. <laughs> yes, lessons in history are alive here in Dodge City on statues on the street signs, and in the town's historic museum. Yeah, I think about setting up and doing it. That's good money for I even ducked into the Long Branch Saloon, like it was 1874. Kitty wasn't there, but the bartender was. Next stop was up to Boot Hill Cemetery. No graves exist there today, but memories linger. Hmm, Boot Hill is a reminder. The Old West wasn't easy street. Fortunately, Dodge City is much friendlier today. Oh, we got a point. <laughs> Up next, Pass It On invites more young hunters in Kansas to discover the joys of hunting and fishing. Rooster, 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 rooster. You're watching The Flush. If you want to be the very best shot that you can possibly be in the field, then you really ought to consider the choke tubes in the end of your shotgun. What is a choke tube? Well, this right here is a choke tube. And a choke tube goes in the end of your shotgun. Each gun has different chokes. This right here is for my 20 gauge. These chokes come with the gun. Benelli guns come with a different set of choke tubes. Each one plays a different role. Cylinder, improved, modified, full. Each one of these chokes are going to change your shot pattern and the distance of your shot pattern. So a full choke is going to keep a tighter pattern at a longer distance. Cylinder is going to be wider, cylinder or skeet. Now, why does this matter when you're hunting? Well, if you're hunting for quail, let's say, or grouse in the thick north woods, grouse don't typically need a whole bunch of pellets. Sometimes it just takes one BB to bring that bird down, but they're fast and they're elusive. They're moving through the cover. So you want a bigger pattern. And for quail, they're equally fast. 
you don't necessarily need to have a tighter pattern. You want to open it up a little bit. Now, if you're hunting pheasants late season in wide open country on public lands, and those birds are getting up at 30, 40 yards, that's when you would want to go with a choke that is tighter, like the full choke. Choke tubes make a big difference when you're hunting for different birds. Whichever one you choose, you want to make sure that you go to the range before you hunt. People sight in their rifles before they go deer hunting. Upland bird hunters should do the same with their shotguns. The Flush is brought to you by Chief Upland, Wells Lamont Gloves, Superior Pump, Southwire Tools and Equipment, and by Wing It. Puppies. This is like Hi, Christmas man. morning. <laughs> One more time, Brittany has organized mentor volunteers to help introduce kids to hunting. I think we're ready to go. You got ammo? Everybody's got some ammo. Another safety talk. Guys, we're shooting here. And it was time to lock and load. Oh, heal. Heal. <laughs> It's time to meet Jewel. Jewel is a four-year-old black lab female off some pretty good pedigree of pointing labs. She's one of our main guide dogs. Does it both upland and waterfowl. She's always a loving dog, great family dog. Bad habit, man, she's stubborn. Stubborn as stubborn can get. Kind of troublesome to get up on, be right under your foot, and then it decides to fly, or it could be 30 yards in front of you and decides to pick a different zip code to move to. I get to provide food for myself. Everybody just goes to the grocery store, but I'm out here, you know, harvesting my own food. Self accomplishment. I just enjoy hunts. Something different, not a lot of people do. I've never really hunted pheasants with a lot of dogs. I think we hunted last time with one or two. If you go down later in life and you need to actually hunt for your food, you know how to do it since a young age, so it just comes in handy.
I mean, a kid shoot his first pheasant or catch his first bass or any of those kind of things is a thrilling moment for everybody involved. Last year we had over 550 kids that we had out on the different hunts. We're doing hunts from eastern Kansas all the way to western Kansas and borders in between and now we're also doing hunts up in Iowa. Mike had reached out to my mom and asked if we wanted to hunt and then we got our hunter's education license and then went on a pheasant hunt. They picked me up when I was 14, I want to say, after I did my hunter safety class and been great ever since. Kansas Ringnecks also teach some lessons. Does mentoring kids ever get old? No, it's not a job. I had an opportunity to get involved in it and work with these kids, and it's, it's really been tremendously rewarding. Oh, hey, good shit. Despite hundreds of hunts with kids, Brittany maintains her enthusiasm. I have a lot of joy. I'm really happy and I'm, I'm really passionate about this program and I guess about life. <laughs> 23. And passing it on, she does.